Hello teachers and welcome to the short video series on how to configure your new Power Teacher Pro gradebook. These videos come to you thanks to a test server or a partner server that allows us to simulate what Power Teacher Pro would look like in a high school. Now this is not our actual Power School server for any grade entry or attendance entry or student data needs by teachers. You're instead going to go to ps.spart7.org slash teachers. That's teachers with an S at the end. Um, that direct link is not Googleable. Uh, you cannot find our Power Teacher portal, uh, which is what I've already logged into here. So in my Power Teacher Pro portal, you'll notice that nothing much has changed as far as uh, the buttons for attendance, uh, seating charts, um, being able to generate reports, things like that. What you will notice is that on the left hand side, Power Teacher Gradebook, uh, and this is version 2.8, uh, that's this gradebook here. It looks like that little brown ABC book with a pen across it. That gradebook is going to stop working for entering or editing grades. Instead, what we're going to be using is Power Teacher Pro. So underneath each of your sections, Power Teacher Pro links will be listed for those sections that are enabled for Power Teacher Pro. Now, if you don't see uh, a Power Teacher Pro gradebook link uh, beneath one of your sections, please contact your building's Power School administrator or get in touch with one of the technology specialists so we can get that sorted out uh, in this first year. Most of uh, the courses will see that, but just in the event that we overlooked one, please let us know. Accessing Power Teacher Pro is entirely installation free, which is great. So that old gradebook that we used to have to download and use launch materials for here on the left hand side, we can go ahead and trash that app and ignore anything uh, in this box from here on out because here's how easy it is to launch your gradebook. I simply go to my homeroom section, click on the link, and I have not left my Safari or Chrome web browser, and there I am already in the gradebook. So this is entirely web-based. When you first log in, there's going to be a couple things that we suggest you change as part of your Power Teacher Pro setup. Uh, that affects everything that you see in the interface. Um, for the most part, the tabs have not changed that much in the old brown Power Teacher gradebook. Uh, that's the app that I've got hovering in the screen here. Uh, most of the tabs were arranged along the top of the interface. Now the tabs are all on the left hand side. So grading will be for adding or entering assignments and their respective grades. Uh, students is going to be able to allow you to look at uh, a particular student's progress. So that's going to be, uh, you know, Jane or Joe, uh, those particular students and what they have uh, submitted and how their grades are reporting. Progress is a new tab. This is going to be uh, covered in a later video. Reports is going to allow you to print your progress reports, for example, or uh, your grade verification sheets. Finally, uh, you're going to have an option for settings, and we're going to take a look at that in just a second. Um, and the last one here is apps. Apps will be uh, where we will see Abe for discipline referrals. Now, when you first log in, you're going to see a screen that looks more like this, the getting started. And you notice I can always go back and reference uh, the getting started just to kind of get an idea of where everything is laid out. As we upgrade PowerSchool, you'll probably also see little pop-ups very similar to this that explain new upgrades, new enhancements, things like that. Now, this help menu will always follow you around uh, Power Teacher Pro. So if you need to reference their help, uh, you'll notice that you can pop open um, Power Schools help. Now these are not District 7 policies. These are Power Schools uh, more general help. Otherwise you can also use their video section. That's a little bit again more of a tour generally of Power School 
and these videos that we're producing are specific to District 7 grading policies. Uh, so you're not going to see that here. You're going to need to reference your power school administrator at your building uh, or your technology coaches for advice there. One of the features that Power Teacher Gradebook lacked uh, but is now part of Power Teacher Pro is the ability to adjust the interface. Now, as I click on my user dropdown here, uh, I can click on large to see a larger interface. That means I'm going to see larger text, but perhaps you know fewer grades or fewer settings per page. I'll have to do more scrolling. I can also adjust down to small, which is going to fit more on the screen. These settings can be changed on any device. So if you're comfortable with medium, for example, on your MacBook, if you sign in to your iPad, this menu still exists so you can get a larger view on a smaller screen. Now that we have a comfortable display size, now let's talk about those settings we mentioned before. There are some settings we want to change, uh, particularly in the display settings when we first log in to PowerTeacher Pro. As you go around PowerTeacher Pro, you'll start to see uh, standards-based grading links. We can disable those by going to Settings, Display Settings, and scrolling down to turn off where it says Show Standards, Pages, and Links. That's going to disable the standards-based grading practices uh, that are not common in District 7 at the moment. As we scroll down, I also want to point out a couple other new features to PowerTeacher Pro that might be useful in the first few weeks of school. Uh, first, let's point out that you can change the way student names are displayed. You can also sort students by now their grade level as well as name. But this box here, add newly enrolled students to the bottom, might be a feature you want to turn on the first few weeks of school as students are frequently uh, changing schedules or perhaps transferring into school. What that'll do is separate out any new students at the bottom of your roster so you know the students that you need to get caught up, get handouts to. Of course you can turn that feature off after the first few weeks of school. Now with everything uh, in PowerTeacher Gradebook, the old version, we always had to hit that save button. That has not changed. So after I turn off my standards usage, I'm going to click Save on this page. In our next few videos, we're going to be going back to the Settings button and using the traditional Grade Calculations tab to set up your gradebook weightings. So whether you teach a semester, EOC, EOC with a final, EOC without a final, and even some of our AP courses, uh, we're going to dedicate a video to each of those grade setups. So in the next few videos, you're going to pick and choose uh, which grade setups are particular to the course you are teaching. If you don't know how to choose the next videos, please consult with your PowerSchool administrator at your building or one of your school administrators so you know how to best set up your grade calculations.